السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فيا عباد الله يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات اللول الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار Sadaqallahu al-Ali al-Azim. Last week we had <clears throat> gone over the introduction of restarting or doing the series again on a day in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And today inshallah we will start this series. The purpose of this series is not educational. In school, in academic classes, maybe they're educational. Information, khabar, okay, that's it, we know, we're aware. But in the teachings of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, information is not enough. Al-ilm bila amal, kashajar, kashajaratan bila tamar. Knowledge without action is like a tree with no fruits, no benefit. That's khabar. He has information, that's it. He doesn't do amal on that amal. She doesn't do amal on that. She doesn't act upon that action, that she, that knowledge that she has, and it's useless. It is not useful. That knowledge is not useful. It is not beneficial. So the purpose of this lesson and this series is not information. It's to change our lives to make sure that what we do, we are living a similar life to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Generally, we thought we would start, the Prophet Wasallam would start his day with Salat al-Fajr. However, the Prophet Wasallam would start his day way before Salat al-Fajr. The Prophet Wasallam's day did not start with Salat al-Fajr. It actually started much before that. The fact that the Prophet Wasallam started his day much before and much earlier then Salat al-Fajr showed you his, shows you his work ethics. How hard of a worker he was. Along with his work ethic, it shows you what the Prophet sallallahu focused on when he woke up. Every day started in a similar manner. في السفر والحضر In safar and in, in journey. In journey and at home. It was a, whether he was a resident at home or on a journey, his day would start in a very similar manner. You can see a person, you know what matters to a person when you see what he does as soon as they wake up. What is the first thing we do when we wake up? That thing that we do, the first thing we do when we wake up, is the most important thing to us because that is as soon as we wake up, that's the thing that comes to our mind. Checking our phone, checking our messages, checking if we got any updates, checking our email, what happened at work, what happened in sports, what was the score, who won the game, whatever comes to our mind when we wake up is the thing that matters to us the most. So when someone doesn't have any commitments or importance, doesn't have something that they considered a priority, then their, their life, they wake up in pretty much in useless and vain things, and vain thoughts. So I'm not even talking about what the Prophet ﷺ did 
When he woke up, I'm, da- I'm just talking about mentally when he woke up, what was the first thing he thought? We're not even talking about actions right now. We're talking about what he thought. And then that led to actions. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not someone that was lazy. As a matter of fact, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua for protection from being lazy. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ajazi wal-kasal. The Prophet ﷺ would make this dua, O oh Allah, I seek your protection from being incapable or uncapable of doing something, and I seek your protection from being lazy. So the Prophet ﷺ was not lazy. And the Prophet ﷺ had amazing work ethics. When you read about those people who are successful in this world, whether it's in worldly matters or in deeny matters, Generally, the overall majority of them get up early. The 4 a.m. club, the 5 a.m. club, they wake up early. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam woke up early, before Salat al-Fajr. And then when the Prophet said, what he, when he woke up, what did he do? فَجَعَلَ يَمْسَحُ النَّوْمَ عَنْ وَجْهِهِ بِيَدِهِ So when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam woke up, what were we feeling tired? Unfortunately, what we do is yawn, maybe, if we're still exhausted. The Prophet ﷺ woke up, what was the first thing he ﷺ did? He took his hands and he wiped his eyes. And he wiped his face. That's how he woke himself up. Now, every morning, in order to remember this hadith, the Sunnah of the Prophet when we wake up, this is the first thing we should be doing. Another way to remember what you should be doing, go tell others. Go home, tell your children. Go tell your wives. Go tell your colleagues. Go tell your friends. You know what I learned today? You know my, our, you, do you even know our, how our Habib, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, woke up? فَجَعَلَ يَمْسَهُ النَّوْمِ he, he wiped away the sleep when he woke up. He was tired, exhausted, just woke up, opened his eyes at the hajjah time, and he wiped the sleep on his face. It's the first thing we should do. The second thing the Prophet did was made the dua for waking up. And there's different narrations, whatever narration you have memorized, whatever version you have memorized, okay. Alhamdulillah, illadi ahyana, ba'dama amatana wa ilayhin nushu. What do you wake up with? The first thing the Prophet did upon waking up was to express gratitude to Allah. How often? It's the first thing we do about when we wake up, we complain about our sleep or lack of it. We didn't get enough rest. Oh, this happened. Man, I'm still exhausted. I'm still tired. What did the Prophet do the first thing when he woke up? Alhamdulillah. They say when someone is going through depression and difficulties and calamities, they need to start remembering the things that they're grateful for. When someone is concentrated on their blessings, they're not worried about what depresses them. They're not stressed out about what depresses them because they're concentrated on their blessings. The first word, our Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he woke up, what did he say? Alhamdulillah. See, this is, we make it a ritual. Okay, that, you know, if we have a habit, we wake up, we just naturally say it. It's a ritual, it's just a adat, a habit. The first word he said was, Alhamdulillah. All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you will find a common theme regarding the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that he will always look for things to be grateful for. He's always looking, I had this, Alhamdulillah. I had this, Alhamdulillah. No, I don't have this, man. I wish I had that. I don't have this. I don't have that. No, no, no. I had this, Alhamdulillah. I have water to drink, Alhamdulillah. I have food to eat, Alhamdulillah. I woke up, Alhamdulillah. I'm in my home, Alhamdulillah. I'm in my blanket, Alhamdulillah. I woke up with my wife next to me, Alhamdulillah. The Prophet ﷺ was constantly looking at those things to be grateful for. If we were to just change our mindset, we would always be in life, we would always be happy in life, because there's so much to be grateful for. Okay, what did he say when he woke up? What did the Prophet sallallahu say when he woke up? Alhamdulillah, alladhi ahyana ba'da ma amatana. All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave us life after causing us to die. 
That is why we say that sleep is the sister or an example of death. Because we will die and Allah will resurrect us. We die kind of, and to an extent we were gone and Allah will us. This shows us that sleep is the sister of death just as the soul leaves the body. When we die, so just like our sleep causes us, you know, to not, to everything shuts off. The difference is that when we're sleeping, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows and permits the soul to return to the body in sleep. Whereas in death, until resurrection, the soul will not return. This is how the Prophet started his day. Immediately as the day he starts, he wipes away from his face. He wipes the sleep away from his face. And then he makes this dua of Alhamdulillah Allahi Ahyana Badama Amatana wa ilayhi nushu. So he is starting off at what? He sallallahu alayhi wa is reminding himself as soon as he woke up of what? Death. And that is the ultimate destination, death. In our circles, we try, we try usually try to avoid the talk of death until we're forced to discuss it. When someone in our family is suffering and they're close to death, now we're going to discuss it. Now we're worried. Now we're concerned. We hear that someone from our community, our elders, now he's suffering from a disease that is going to lead him to death. Now we're worried about death. Well, the Prophet ﷺ, when he woke up, the first thing he did was reminded himself of death and expressed gratitude of waking up again. But in our circles, we don't like talking about death, even though that's how we're supposed to wake up. The Prophet ﷺ said, أَكْثِرُوا ذِكْرَ هَذِي مِنْ لَزَّةِ Abundantly discuss death, remember death abundantly. Because it reminds us of our final destination and it removes our attachment with this world and instills the concern of the hereafter within us. Just by waking up, we are focused on what we're going to do today. Imagine the power of just waking up with this dua. If you truly follow the teachings of the Prophet, understood, imagine just waking up that way. If you had a bad night, you ended with a bad night, you woke up. I woke up today. Why am I concerned? I'm gonna die anyways. Okay, let me focus on my goals. Let me focus on what I have to prepare for, and that is death. But we wake up concerned about what dunya. We wake up concerned about what money. We wake up concerned about what our children are going to listen to us. We wake up concerned about what I didn't do this. I didn't do that. I didn't get this. He didn't get this. She's at me. She's mad at me. He's upset. With me. This is how we wake up. You see, when someone is focused. On the final destination, when they're fully focused, nothing else means anything to them. You're not worried about anything else. You know in sports, and you can see these, these children who have a very competitive nature in sports, they're focused. They just want to win, they don't care how it gets done. The ultimate goal is what? Winning the game. Anything else that is an obstacle for me to win a game, is a distraction to me. I want nothing to do with it. I don't want nothing to do with this action right now because it does not help me accomplish my goal. And my goal is to win. When our focus is on the akhirah, nothing in the dunya matters to us. Somebody took my money, someone bought the new phone, someone bought the new car, someone harassed me, humiliated me, ridiculed me, mocked me, cursed at me, persecuted me, did all of these things, it doesn't matter. Because addressing you was never my ultimate goal. My ultimate goal was to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and attain Jannah in the year after. This is how the Prophet sallallahu woke up. He was focused. He reminded himself, number one, I need to be grateful that Allah has given me another day, alhamdulillah. And then this day I need to focus on what? Ahyana ba'dama amatana. Wa ilayhin nushur. And my ultimate return is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything we do in our life should be centered around our ultimate objective, and that is to be ready to meet Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Oh, you know, what do these, you know, when these play these sports and they're down three-one, what do they say? We're gonna take it one game at a time, one game at a time. Let's win the next game. We're not talking about the whole series right now. Let's win one game at a time. When I worried about the whole life, when you look at life as a bigger picture, we feel like we have such a long life, even though Allah has not given anyone their expiration date. No one's sitting here as I know when I'm going to expire and when I'm going to die. No one's going to say that yet. Take one day at a time. 
No, I have my whole life. I'm going to pray later. I'm going to worry about my kids later when they get older. I'm going to worry about my Quran later. You know, I still have so much time. I'm going to retire and then I'm going to give my time to deen. I'm going to become a, you know, a very rich businessman and then I'm going to donate. I'm going to do this when I, you know, as if you're a guaranteed a life. No, take it one day at a time. You get one life, is that day preparing you for the hereafter or not? There is no one here that can guarantee that they're going to live today. By the end of the day, there's no one sitting here that can give that guarantee. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from a sudden death. There is a dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa To be protected from a sudden death where no one is prepared for it. <laughs> so every morning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is how he woke up. How many people know how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam woke up? This is important. If we don't know it ourselves, how will we teach our children to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa The first thing we do is wake up. And we're telling our children, love the Prophet ﷺ, love the Prophet ﷺ, follow the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, make sure you're doing this, make sure. How did he ﷺ wake up? When he woke up, he wiped away the sleep from his face. Then he made this dua, Alhamdulillah, reminding himself to be grateful. Alhamdulillah, for what? Ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhim nushul. To grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he woke me up after giving me that. Wa ilayhim nushul, and my ultimate return is to him. My ultimate return is next. It is to him. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He would wake up in the middle of the night, or a little bit before the middle of the night, or halfway of the night during the Hajjud time. And you can say maybe hour, hour and a half, or maybe forty-five minutes to an hour, depending on the time or where he was before Salat al-Fajr. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would wake up and the first thing he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did is take the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam فَجَعَلَ يَمْسَهُ النَّوْمَ عَنْ وَجْهِ بِيَدِهِ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wiped away the sleep from his face, rubbed his palms on his eyes and woke himself up and then he read the dua then ثُمَّ قَرَأَ الْأَشْرَ الْعَايَةِ الْخَوَاتِمْ then the Prophet ﷺ read the last 10 verses of Surah Ali Imran. What are they? It's actually a long ruku. The last few verses of Surah Ali Imran, the last 10 verses of Surah Ali Imran. Generally, I just say, okay, this is what the Prophet ﷺ woke up with, and then I don't go into detail. But this time, inshallah, I am going to go into the detail of these verses. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish today. That means you have to come back next week to get the completion, inshallah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa woke up with the last 10 verses of Surah Ali Imran. And the homework for everyone is that inshallah, after this salah, open up your phones and look at the translation of the last 10 verses of Surah Ali Imran, which is the third Surah of the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Baqarah, and Surah Ali Imran. Look at the last 10 verses of Surah Ali Imran, look at its translation, and inshallah you have a better understanding of it. What did they start off with? Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ar, wa akhtilaf al-layli wa al-nahari la ayat al-ul al-alba. Inshallah, as we continue this series, I will go faster, but I think it's very important we stress on how the Prophet ﷺ started his day, how he ﷺ woke up. And see if we can bring that into our lives too. So we'll try to take it slowly, but effectively, efficiently, where we bring it into our lives too, inshallah. So hopefully, tomorrow when you wake up, you wipe away the sleep from your face, inshallah. <laughs> what do these verses mean? Why are they one of the first few verses the Prophet would recite when waking up for the Hajjad? Inna fi khalqis samawati wal ard. Verily in the creation of the heaven and the earth. Wa khtilaf al-layli wa al-nahar la ayat al alba. Verily in the creations of the heaven and the earth. And the changing of the day and night. From going from day to night, night to day. This is also a miracle of Allah. So in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the days and night changing, 
There are signs in it for those who have understanding. In order to understand this verse, you need to be from Ulul Alba. Otherwise, you will not understand the benefit, the spiritual effect of these verses if you're not from Ulul Alba. Only those who are Ulul Alba will understand the importance of the creation of the heaven and the earth and the night and day changing. Only those who will understand who are Ulul Alba. Who are Ulul Alba? We'll get there in a second, inshallah. So the Prophet ﷺ is waking up. What is he reminding himself? That throughout this day, everything around me should remind me about Allah. Everything around me should remind me by Allah. One of the pious predecessors, he says, Wallahi. He says, I swear by Allah, I do not leave my house. Min manzili. I do not leave my house until I have mentally and consciously prepared my mind to tell me that everything that I lay my eyes upon should remind me about Allah. I don't leave my house before that. I will not leave my house until everything reminds me about the existence of Allah. In the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the changing of the night and day, and the earth and whatever is here should remind me about Allah, should be a sign back to Allah, and the only ones who will benefit from that are Ulul Albab. So the Prophet ﷺ is reminding himself about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do you become Ulul Albab? That these signs around us will affect us. We will discuss it next week, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those people who live our daily lives in accordance to the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength and tawfiq to not just listen but to act upon, to bring it into our lives. So on the day of judgment, we can tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that on a daily basis, whatever we did, we did it in accordance to a similar manner of the teachings of your Habib. صلى الله عليه وسلم جزاكم الله خيرا وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين